This is a Lotus Elise, the car that revolutionised what a sports car could be back in the mid 90s, both in terms of its construction and its driver involvement. Now I know you want one, but let's be real, these cars are getting on for 20 years old now, so there's definitely a few things you want to be checking before you hand over that cash. So make sure you cover all the points in this video. Let's go. First up, bodywork. Usual rules are going to apply here, guys. So we're looking at the shut lines and also we're looking at each individual panel. We want to make sure that the shade doesn't differ dramatically from panel to panel. Might suggest that panel has been resprayed badly or something else has happened there. Now, here's one thing in particular applying to the Elise and any car that uses glass fibre bodywork. It's called osmosis, which I thought sounded a bit like a joint disease, but it's actually when the moisture gets trapped beneath the paint and it manifests itself as a kind of bubbling or flaking of the paint. So again, go around all the body panels and check that that's not an issue. Next stop, front of the car, because remember the radiator actually sits under here on these cars. And due to that positioning, it can be prone to both damage and a bit of corrosion as well. So make sure you get to the front here, get a look through this venting and make sure everything looks okay. Now if it's got an aftermarket aluminium or stainless steel one, even better. Now as for the hood guys, obviously the car you're looking at may have a soft top, it might have a hard top like this car. Now these hard tops are really sought after, mainly because a soft top really isn't all that great. It's pinned the backside to fit and even if fitted correctly it can still leak. So if the car you're looking at has a hard top, that's a good sign. If it doesn't, take a shower cap for the test drive. So as an added treat, we've actually got the owner with us today, Darren from Ultimate Car Enthusiast, who's going to take us over some details about the engine, given that he's actually gone ahead and fixed some of these problems firsthand now. Right guys, I am the proud owner of this Lotus Lease S2. Now, when you go on Wikipedia, there is a lot of negativity, but don't always base the car off that. Don't let it discourage you from buying this car. Now, this is a K-Series Rover engine, and it is prone to head gasket failure. It's usually between 30 and 50K is when the head gasket will tend to go in these cars. What are the signs then of head gasket failure? What are we looking for here? Well, usually it's a, a smell of fumes coming from the exhaust, um, a male texture coming from the oil cap, and rising temperatures right, coming okay. from the gauges inside the car. But you had rising temperatures, didn't you? It didn't yes. necessarily mean head gasket failure. It was, uh, was it a thermostat? Thermostat and thermostat housing warp. The part itself was cheap, but the labor costs were extortionate. So I guess if you were getting temperatures rising, it's not the end of the world. It might just be a thermostat as well. Uh -huh. Well, the temperatures were, were rising 10 degrees and above. Oh, hi. My name's Grant Davidson. Do you hate getting ripped off buying cars? Do you think people who try and sell cars and cover up faults are a bunch of <laughs> Well, subscribe today and let's catch those bullshit sellers out together. Your contribution can help stop these fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> now something I always make a point of mentioning is we want to look at the tyres, we want to look at the brakes, we want to look at these wear components to make sure you're not buying a car and having to fork out money right away. No one likes that. Now if the tyres are worn, the brakes are worn, it's not the end of the world but these are definitely things that we want to pick up on and bring up with the seller. These are great negotiation points to keep money in your pocket. Now usually at this point, I would say get a look at the sills, get a look at the subframes to make sure there's no corrosion on there. However, on the Elise it's a little bit different because really the only area that uses a significant amount of steel is the rear subframe. Now that subframe is galvanized, so even at that, it's not even really an area you need to worry about unless it's had a sketchy repair or bad weld job. Could you just touch my face, Darren? <laughs> on the camera. Cool, it should be focused. And so guys, on to the job that no one really likes when we're viewing a used car. But we need to get down, we need to have a look at the underside. Now it's imperative that we do that on the Elise. Now the reason for that is because this high-sided tub and subframe setup, which was really revolutionary at the time and helps keep this car's weight down, also responds really, really badly to crash damage. So we want to have a look underneath 
we want to make sure that everything is straight and clean. We look at each corner of the car and make sure that there's no obviously new components fitted under there. Now, if it is worst case scenario, you buy a car, and you need to replace the tub or say the rear subframe, that's gonna be really troublesome because according to Lotus, they actually lost the jigs for these components. This is a bit of a weird thing to lose, really. So one of the maybe more obvious problems you're gonna have with the Elise is if you're of taller or larger stature, perhaps. So they're not exactly the easiest to get in and out of, and for your entertainment, let's watch six foot four Harry attempt to get in and out. Imagine you're buzzing, ready to go to the car meet, and then just try to squeeze in here. Oh, there's my head hitting the roof. Oh, there are my legs stuck. There we go. Left leg in, right leg in, and there you go. You're ready to go. Actually try to get out. So you pull up at the local Asda petrol station. Up, oh, you put 15. Go ahead in. You're getting looks for the inside of the shop. And you need to like crawl out and then boom. <laughs> There you go, ready to fill up. <laughs> so it's not exactly the most practical of cars. You probably wouldn't want to pick your nan up, let's say that. Now, as a result of that, guys, uh, back on a more serious note, the car you're looking at, check the door cards for accelerated wear and also the seats and these sills. Because it's not the easiest to get in and out of, people tend to sort of drag over them, it can kind of accelerate the wear. So you don't really as much as sit in an Elise as you do kind of wear it, but nonetheless it feels really, really special. A really, really focused car. If anything, it makes my R8 feel like a bit of a sofa. Now something else you might want to consider before the point where you find yourself here, sat in someone's car, about to buy it, is remember these early Elises, there's no power steering, there's limited electrics, there's no stability control, there's no traction control. Now for a lot of people, me included, admittedly, uh, these are plus points. It's a real nice driver's car however make sure you go in with your eyes open about what you're looking at buying here now again as you sit in here guys before we fire the car up we want to have a look at the things that the MOT doesn't necessarily cover so how about that radio how about the we're probably wishful thinking air conditioning in this car but how about the heater controls and if it's got electric windows fitted these were actually a failure point in cars a little bit newer than this and it could be a real costly fix so be careful make sure you check all the electrics if fitted this is an issue that's occurred on this actual car as well and that is the gear linkage it can sometimes slip off and whilst it's not a big deal, it's got the potential to strand you, so make sure you give that stick a good old sugar. Now if on the test drive it crunches going into gear, then that's a different story. Likely the synchros are getting tired or completely toast and requiring change. Now that's a rebuild job and it is pricey, so make sure that's not the case. And if the seller tells you it's normal, don't believe it. It shouldn't crunch going into gear. Now once you've actually got the car out on the road, which I'm sure you're just dying to do, it should feel quick, although it's a relatively low power output, the car is pretty lightweight. So it should definitely feel strong, shouldn't be hesitant in the slightest in terms of power delivery. So Grant, I have a question for you. Yes. Does this car make you feel like a boy again? It makes me feel like a man. Does it? It makes me feel like a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> now, on that test drive, guys, the car should feel sharp as anything. Even today, the Elise is still world-renowned for its handling abilities. Now that being said, they aren't an overly firm car, they're really nicely damped, and despite being razor sharp and changing direction like a housefly, it still maintains composure over bumps because they are so nicely damped and set up. So again, any crashes or lumps or bumps that you're getting as you go over speed bumps or potholes in the road isn't normal. And that being said, it's not the end of the world, but again, good negotiation points to bring up with that seller. Could be that a shock is getting tired, could be that a bush is maybe worn out. It would really take a little bit more investigation. All right guys, and one of the last things for you to try on that test drive, and that is the clutch. Now, as I've mentioned in other videos, best way to do that is get yourself to an incline, maybe three, 4,000 RPM, and floor that throttle. Now, what we're looking for there is to make sure that the RPMs, the revs of the car, climb proportionally to the vehicle speed. If they don't and we just get the revs going shooting up, then new clutch required, I'm afraid. Don't let the seller pull a fast one on you. Make sure you mention it and either get considerable money off or, I'm afraid, walk away from that car.
Now finally guys, and this is important, make sure you enjoy the process of shopping for and getting your very own Lotus Elise. To my mind, they're still a sports car bargain and one of the most focused cars you can buy today. Now if you're looking at a car and it's got a problem you're maybe not too sure about or you own one of these cars and you have a problem you're not too sure about, go ahead and drop a comment in the comment section below and we'll come back to you and help you out with that. But for now, good luck with finding your perfect Lotus Elise. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.